Now, <clears throat> last week we left off with the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965. And basically that act reclaimed the idea that America was a nation that welcomed immigrants. And the signal achievement of the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965 was to abolish the harmful quota system in effect since 1924, which numerically restricted immigration and allocated visas according to national origin and race. Now, as we covered in this course, the quota structure favored immigration from Northern and Western Europe and restricted it from Eastern and Southern Europe, and it excluded Asians altogether. The 1965 Immigration Act is going to get rid of this blatantly racist system and it will replace it with one based on individual qualifications, giving preference to those with skills and those with family members in the United States. The emphasis was on family reunification. To further make the system fair, it set a uniform cap on all countries at 7% of the annual total. Now, the emphasis on individual merit and on treating all nations the same as, Ngai, as May and Guy historian uh, writes, was an ideal expression of the civil rights philosophy of the time. Let's go and listen to President Lyndon Johnson's speech that he gave as he signed the act. The President's remarks upon signing the immigration bill on Liberty Island in New York City, October 3rd, 1965. Mr. Vice President, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Ambassador Goldberg, uh, distinguished members of the leadership of the Congress, distinguished governors and mayors, my fellow countrymen. We have called the Congress here this afternoon not only to mark a very historic occasion, but to settle a very old issue that is in dispute. That issue is to what congressional uh, district does Liberty Island really belong? Congressman Forbstein or Congressman Gallagher? It will be settled by whomever of the two can walk first to the top of the Statue of Liberty. This bill that we will sign today is not a revolutionary bill. It does not affect the lives of millions. It will not reshape the structure of our daily lives or really add importantly to either our wealth or our power. Yet it is still one of the most important acts of this Congress and of this administration. For it does repair a very deep and painful flaw in the fabric of American justice. It corrects a cruel and enduring wrong in the conduct of the American nation. Speaker McCormick and Congressman Seller, more than uh, almost 40 years ago, first pointed that out in their maiden speeches in the Congress. And this measure that we will sign today will really make us truer to ourselves, both as a country and as a people. It will strengthen us in a hundred unseen ways. And I have come here to thank personally each member of the Congress who labored so long and so valiantly to make this occasion come true today and to make this bill a reality. I cannot mention all their names for it would take uh, much too long. Okay, so... <clears throat> In this particular case, President Lyndon Johnson is addressing the fact that the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965 actually redressed or gave um, credence to the racism, the blatant racism that occurred as a result of the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1924 that was reinforced by the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1950 and 51. So, as historian... Uh, May and Guy writes, the result of the heart cellar was a ma wave of massive migration not seen since the last great wave at the turn of the 20th century. She writes, and this influx has ended up being integral 
not only to the life of individual cities and regions, but to the United States' long economic expansion from the 1980s to 2008. Immigrants have supplied labor at both the lower and higher ends of the job market, from drywallers and agricultural workers to software engineers and hospital nurses. And what's more, she adds, they have added immeasurably to the nation's vibrancy, embedding in our culture new literature, cuisines, music, and business. And as a final note, she emphasizes, in New York City, we all eat halal now. <laughs>